Finally bit the dust. This is why you need to use more, more fire brick, or at least maybe insulate the inside of your kiln. This kiln was made using red fire clay bricks, um, or just red clay bricks, sorry, not fire clay bricks. Just, uh, just clay bricks, red clay bricks but they weren't rated for the heat that I was getting it to. So that's why some of these have split and it wasn't held together with mortar. It was held together with mud. And obviously that's just, you know, pulling apart. So, there is a reason why I did that. If y'all haven't seen my videos on how to make a kiln uh, and my reasoning behind why I used mud, uh, there is a reason for that. And the reason is so that you could easily break it apart if you had to move or, I don't know, if you wanted to expand or modify it or something like that, you could easily break it apart. But the downside is that it is also not as strong of a structure. So this has been out here in the elements. I use it almost every week. I don't put a tarp over it. Um, and it finally collapsed. The wall collapsed and then this is usually where I put the uh, my pieces at, my clay pieces at. And some of these bricks in here were starting to crack too. I've had to replace some of these inside bricks before. but. I plan on doing uh, another build and I'm going to make my next kiln a little bit smaller because this one was too big anyways. Um, you could see probably about two bricks high so this back end didn't get as much heat. It's a lot of carbon build up. The front end here did get enough heat to burn off the carbon. So what was happening is I was putting in wood in through here, burning it. It was coming through this firebox and it was pulling straight up. So what I'd have to do to get more heat onto this side was put a flue on this top half right here so that more heat would pull up this way. Uh, but if I close it up a little bit more, make the kiln a little bit smaller, Maybe try and keep it as tall, but somehow make it smaller. Um, that'll fix the heat loss on this side. And yeah, maybe I'll just cut this half right here, you know? Because this back half, I'm not even, I wasn't even really able to fill up this entire kiln with my pottery anyways. And I could put maybe like, a dozen or more pieces just on the bottom here without having to stack so I think what I'm gonna try and do is maybe cut this in half I want to keep this firebox because I can put in logs and, and bigger pieces and I can get a lot of heat into here so I want to try and keep that but maybe maybe I'll try and make it a little bit more compact and I'm gonna try and line up the sides with bricks that are actually rated for more intense heat and maybe I can actually get this kiln hot enough to possibly do some glazes so if you want to watch this new kiln rebuild and see if I can possibly get to um, get to like a glazing state and keep watching this video. It's probably just going to be a lot of time lapse um, to watch my first video of how to build a kiln. Just go to my playlist, you'll find it. I can't remember if I did one for the firebox here, 
but um, if you guys want to see how I made this a, a longer firebox and attached it to the kiln that I do have a video that I know I have a video of posted um, just let me know and I'll show you how to do how to make a, a longer firebox but what I'm gonna do now is I'm probably just going to go into a time-lapse video of me breaking this down building it back up and yeah maybe some shots and stuff in between but I, I got to get this done before uh, the next rainfall and then maybe if it's good enough I'll uh, try and get something fired all right guys stay tuned So, what I plan on doing is cutting my kiln in half. So, I'm going to replace this brick right here, and then I'm pretty much going to have to rebuild this half, build it back up, and I'm probably not even going to build it as tall. I might, because I do make some tall pieces, but I've never made anything as tall as the first kiln that I built. So, um, I think what I'm gonna do is just try and do half size, because that's still a good amount of width. It'll take less fuel to heat up the kiln and to, and to fire my pieces, um, and less maintenance. So half the size, maybe as tall, I think we'll see. Um, replace any broken stuff down here and then I'll get some mud and start rebuilding it I'm still gonna do it out of mud I think what I'm gonna do from now on though is uh, try to um, put a tarp or something like that over it the only reason why I didn't do it before is because Usually the kiln would take a while to cool down and putting a tarp right over it right after you got done firing. Usually firing takes all day. I usually end at night and then I just don't feel like waiting before I put my tarp on. But I could always do it the next day or something. So. All right, so right now I've just taken these back end brick pieces and moved them up to the front all the ones that were broke I took out now I'm just gonna put it and make it in half now so I'm using half of the kiln that I used to have and I'm trying to build it back up probably to the same length that should give me better a um, little bit better heating and less maintenance on the kiln in general. Alright, so after you build your base, which my base doesn't have any 
overlapping segments uh, but the top of the kiln does so after you build your base my base doesn't have overlapping like I said um, I don't know if you can do it overlapping I didn't figure out a way when I very first created this kiln so and I'm not like the best at mason work but anyways some tips that can help you create a more stable structure is overlapping the top half um, or like the shoot of your kiln so um, I started overlapping these sections and you can see here too I started overlapping and what you want to do is try and get everything level with each other you want every every brick level to be flat so level with the ground um, and you can do this by adding or taking away more mud and putting it or taking it away from underneath it you also want to get the sides so try and fill up these cracks because that'll if any of these cracks are open that could give you some heat loss so try and um, fill up the cracks as best you can try and get everything level as best as you can and really all you're going to be doing is just alternating um, and overlapping these meeting points so see how this one right here is a meeting point well now you're going to overlap it with one brick and if you do it right you should still be able to make an enclosure so here is the firebox it's going to pull hot air in and it's going to come here to the main chute area and it's going to come up all right guys this is it so I think this box is about 12 inches tall. Um, it can still fit a lot of my pieces in there and it's gonna be getting a lot more heat to it, uh, a lot more efficiently too. And that's just because I cut off about half of the kiln and the height of it, I've cut off about probably half the height or maybe even a little bit more. Um, I didn't make it any taller just because I don't have any bricks. But if I do make a project where it is uh, taller than this box is, then I could just add more bricks to it as needed. Um, and it's got a very large firebox, so the firebox is going to supply a lot of heat to this small little area. So I think I'm going to try and do some glazes, uh, ash glazes. And what I might do when I do the ash glazes is take these, uh, take these like bricks specifically for higher temperatures and just put it on the inside walls of this kiln and that should help it from cracking and also bring in some more heat. Uh, but that's it for right now. I'm gonna try and just fire it with the regular kiln, uh, fire it with just these bricks without putting any of those kiln bricks in and see how it does. But I think it's gonna do pretty well.